morning. Oh, it's wonderful to be here with oh. you this morning yeah. on the Triforce podcast. Yeah. Hello, P Flex. Oh. Hello, oh. my lovely friend Sips. Hello. Ah. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm clearly not a friend. Yeah, oh, gosh. Oh. Nice. What a huge It's snub. a freezing cold day outside. When this when this podcast comes out, Jingle Jam will have just kicked off. Oh, um, that's the, is that next week already? The event of the year. Holy crap, it's the 25th. Jeez. Yeah, geez. I know it's exciting stuff. It's it's December is here. Oh and my so God. is so is the thing that we've been preparing for ages. Oh man, um, I got to put up like uh, the tree and decorations and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's fun. Oh, it's all man. good. It's all warm, wholesome feelings. The uh, whole the whole thing. I like it. It's it's a whole it's nice. Come on. No one no one minds putting up the man, Christmas you tree. Over and do it then if you like it so much. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay you money. I mean, man, I hate All doing right. it. It takes so long, and it's just like, oh god. Where is it? It's in the loft. Uh, no, no. You, we gotta buy. You gotta buy a tree, and you have to cut it so that it fits. What? And, uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I read, what did I, what was that thing? Yeah, you have to have. I've got a fake one, obviously, but you have to have right. it for ten years to make it worth the cost of a real one or something like that. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I guess yeah. real ones are. Where still, it's at. still have some disposal cost. Yeah, you know, I, oh, I think they, they burn do, yeah. them after they're done in a big Christmassy. Yeah, I wonder what they they should bonfire. they should just like maybe chip them and then uh, you know use those chippings to like you know they could sell it as like mulch or something. I don't know. Like they, they gotta sell do it something with like all of it. Like mince pie right? stuffing next year. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Cut it into logs. Like uh, I, I guess the Christmas the, logs. I guess the trunks on a um on like a like a. A Christmas tree aren't big enough to warrant they're quite, turning they're quite it into... little, aren't they? Yeah, they're little logs, right? They're like little. They're just little trees. They're just baby trees, really, aren't they? They're yeah, not, they're not big enough. Yeah. Mrs. Huh. F every year says to me, "How big a tree do we want to get?" And I always say, 10 feet," and she laughs every time. Like it's right. like it's like our go-to Christmas joke. Ten? Is... Do you have um? Is there is there ten feet of clearance? No, no, no. Your... That's oh, why right. it's funny. I was gonna say. Like, it, but it's the, it's one of those little. Family jokes, you know, the way you've got like an in joke with. Uh, yeah, with we're lucky. We have like high them. ceilings in our in our house for some reason. Yeah. And it's like eight feet or whatever. But I always get a, a Christmas tree thinking, you know, this will fit. And then I cut it and everything and it never quite fits. So there's all these scrape marks on my ceiling where we mm. normally put the christmas tree like right. with like you know just some some old sap or whatever that comes off the the tree because the the very top of the tree always scrapes against the ceiling when i'm putting it into the the holder and stuff it's a lot of hassle it's just a lot of hassle you know you know what i mean like yep. i would be well, happy fast. if the tradition changed and you no longer had to do trees you know what i mean like just like a like a pole with some tinsel on it like festivus is like what you're, festivus you're saying. yeah something like just something easier you know maybe something a bit more modern as well like a spider plant with like lava a couple lamp. of bells a lava lamp would be great yeah something that just still looks really cool but isn't as much faffing around to get set up you know what i mean right. I'm, I, uh, I'm sure someone like knows a, one of those um, it's obviously a traditional yeah. flailing men maybe but i think it, like it, a... it can't be a that old a tradition it must be a no and traditions tradition. evolve right like i mean halloween wasn't always yeah. halloween like it is now thanksgiving right. i doubt was like always the way that it is right now you know thanksgiving I mean, it's it, it like the the essence of Thanksgiving is still there, I'm sure. But like, you know, things have changed a lot, right? Like the way that you prepare food, the types Indeed. of food that people eat, all that kind of stuff. So come on, Christmas, get with the times. Let's have a little, let's change it up a little bit. Let's make so it a little bit easier. Modern Christmas trees originated during the Renaissance in early modern Germany in its 16th century origins are sometimes associated with Protestant Christian reformer right. and massive anti-Semite, I believe, Martin Luther, there you who go. said to have first uh -oh. added lighted candles to an evergreen tree. The earliest what? known firmly dated representation of a Christmas tree is on a keystone sculpture of a private home in Turkheim, Alsace, right. with the date 1576. 1576. Yeah. See, it's been we've had long enough now. Let's change it. Let's like uh, get like a, a chia pet that you could put lights on or or something easy. <laughs> so right. you, you might easier. think it's not a, a religious uh, symbol. The, the secularists out there, such as myself, may think, oh, I don't have anything religious up at Christmas, just a tree. But hold on, because they think it has its origins in the Tree of Paradise, a medieval of medieval mystery plays wow. that were given on the 24th of December to commemorate Adam and Eve. And the tree was decorated with apples to represent the forbidden fruit and wafers to represent redemption. Man, so, they, could, uh, you, they should change that Phil Collins song slightly. So it's like, oh, 
Think twice. It's just another day for you and tree of paradise. Very you know, like good. talking about you and your tree of paradise. In paradise, yeah. Of paradise. It's is tree it tree of in tree of paradise. Tree of paradise. Yeah. So you can it could turn that could become the new Christmas oh, song looks rather nice. than nice covered in apples and wafers to represent the Eucharist. Do, 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 do. Yeah, suck it, Mariah Carey. You're done. Your your days are your days are numbered. Phil Collins is coming back with a remastered Christmas hit, and it's, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, it's Phil more symbolic. Collins, Very Christmas Phil Collins, there's a guy, I remember, he was kind of a punchline in the 80s, Phil Collins. He wore a lot of Christmas sweaters almost full time, actually, like even even outside of Christmas. You remember his wardrobe generally just looked like a Christmas dad's wardrobe? Mm. He had, well, like, he's the always kn- had kind of sweaters. quite strong dad energy, hasn't he? Oh, God, yeah. He had like the... Um, he had like the Milhouse Van Hooten's dad hairdo like quite early on and stuff like <laughs> very Kurt, Kurt Van Hooten Van Houten. sure Kurt Van Houten was his Van name. Houten yeah um, so but he, you know he had like the ring the ring of hair around like the bald head sort of thing just like Phil Collins yeah. had he you know that was his like trademark or whatever but Phil Collins it's had kind of that quite monkey it's quite holy it. yeah. yeah that's probably quite religious would you say about a monkey monkey's quite monkey oh <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about a monkey I thought you said it's, it's quite, quite like monk-like. quite like a monkey. Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> a monkey with like a shaved pate. Yes. So we're, um, so we're changing it. So we're changing it all up. We're getting rid of the tree. We're going to replace it with something better. We're getting rid of Mariah Carey. We're get it. We're going to replace her with yeah, Phil like, Collins. Yeah, like how about candles? There's nothing dangerous about those. Let's get everyone burning loads of candles. Burning can? I don't know about burning candles though. You don't like, like candles at Christmas? Fake. What about the fake tea lights? They're 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 okay. Yeah, they're quite cool. Okay. Although my yeah. kids Plastic play with candles. them all year round, so they're always run out of battery by the time yeah. Christmas comes around. That's what we use to light our pumpkin up. Is is those? Yeah, ones. we did this. Well, we got like a disco one this year. Sick. And the the pumpkin just looked insane. Like uh, it's like purple and green lights coming out of him and stuff some it's... friends of ours did mad eye moody because their kids are big harry potter fans and oh. their carving of mad eye moody was unbelievable it was it was ridiculous it was so good it was like a it was photo like, oh, some people, it was like a photo some people are crazy good eh? this. yeah yeah it was nuts. i think the pumpkin's good right because it's environmentally friendly it wears it's not too big right like it's just a it's just a pumpkin. Do you know what I mean you could eat the He's middle right. if you have to? Um, but as as far as these things go, a tree usually people get get them and chuck them away, or they 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 get big plastic ones, and chuck those away. Mm. There's a lot of waste around Christmas, especially with all the wrapping oh. and all the all that crap and all the bows and ribbons and all all this stuff kind of just goes to waste, and it feels like a very throwaway. Mm. We need to move towards something less. Waste. Disposable. Yeah, we we you yeah. know our society's kind of based on disposability. Um, yeah. What's a Christmas vegetable? Parsnip, Brussels sprout. You need to okay. get some of those some of those find a flush bags. You know, like they made the wipes now. Find a flush. Make the make um, bags and stuff out of that too, and then you can just flush a whole bag down the down the toilet too. You say we need to have a Christmas bag in the living room. Yeah, a Christmas bag. And then Christmas done, bag. Just flush oh, Christmas bag. <laughs> I hope it's full of useful things. <laughs> it's fine to flush down your lavatory, <laughs> providing you are done with the Christmas bag. Christmas bag. Oh man. Man, this is this is great. Uh, like, and, and the bag must not be overfilled either. That's another thing. I don't know about you guys, but like, when you're when no you're putting, bulging sack. Well, it when says in the Bible, doesn't thing. it? Thou shalt yeah. not overfill thine Christmas bag. Thou, oh, thy oh, thy Christmas sack bag. shall not not bulgest. Let not uh, thy sack bulgeth on no, Christmas morn. Let not thy sack. <laughs> let not thy sack bulgeth. Um. Remove those with bulging sacks <laughs> from the rest of you and place yes. them in Relieve a cave. Your Yourself and so that your sack does not bulge. Great so. shame will be bestowed upon those with a with a bulging sack around the time of. Um, I just renamed Christmas as well. Maybe not to Festivus, but let's. Call You're it something right. Different Christmas too. is not. Uh, yeah, holidays. People say, but that's not a whole, good. We just need a, a whole overhaul. I'm just you know. I don't think we can really do that because although we may well partake in Christmas. It's not really our holiday if we're not Christians. Uh, petition like we're just to kind of yoinking it. Petition to ban DFS from all trade uh, for like a month <laughs> around Christmas as Can well. Can we just ban I'm them done. full stop? 
Man, I, I bought a sofa. It's fine. I don't need to replace it all the time. DFS, come on. What are you doing to yourself? Like, what do you want from me? There's too many ads all the time for DFS. You know, like, let's yeah. change it up. Like, I, I don't think you could say as well that, you know, it's not our festival. Just because we don't believe in, in any of this guff doesn't mean that we can't. It's not part of our culture. It's not like we're going around burning down the churches. I'm not saying towns, we can't you know join I mean? in. I'm saying we. I don't think it's our place to start saying... Christmas is, is stupid. They should get rid of all the religious stuff, and uh, you know it's, it's all there for a reason, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I'm happy I, I to can't tell that the lines are blurred for way, me. But, I don't uh, know what bits are religious and which bits aren't now. Like. Well, we didn't no, even know, know the Christmas either. tree was, and now it turns out it is. Yeah. Its roots are there, so I, I think yeah, we, we can't well, it go turns messing out with that it. Actually, the Pope, God bless him, uh, Pope John Paul. What do you remember the um which one? Really old one? There's a whole bunch of them. Like the There's second? kind of withered Yoda one from back in the day. Mm. Okay, well you're not being very specific here. They all look <laughs> they, they all look like little Gilbert grapes, like with the, the hats on and stuff, you know? Like I don't know. I can't tell the difference. Wasn't one German recently? The there was a German one recently, I think. I don't know. My yes, honestly, my my Pope knowledge is not where it should be. They went from the from John Paul to the Emperor from Star Katzenberg Wars, and then or something his name was back to me. the most recent one. Anyway, the Pope John Paul called the Christmas tree a symbol of Christ, uh, a very ancient custom that exalts the value of life. There you go. Uh, in winter, what is evergreen becomes a sign of undying life. And reminds Christians of the tree of life. There you an go. An image of Christ. What did that Pope do before he became the Pope? What, he just was he, he's an accountant or something? And then no, he just they, became like, the Pope? No, he's like a bishop or whatever forever. Oh, like they, they, they just get, are... it's just a promotion. They yeah, just it's a promotion. A... That's exactly it. But it's a promotion ordained by God. Like, the idea is that they all get together, the cardinals and all the rest of it, whatever they are. I don't know what the highest rank is. It's like the field marshals of, of the church, you know. And they all get right. together and they say, who's going to be like um, El Capo de Tutti Capo? Who's going to be the big dog? Right. And they literally say, well, God's telling me to vote for this lad. So they all vote. And then the smoke goes out and they say, we got a new pope. And they, they've chosen him, but he's, he's elected. But it's like, you know, in the past, they would think, when you, you, do you remember when they used to have, I don't say you remember, but do you recall the fact that they used to have battles to the death and you know that sort of trial by combat god would decide who the victor was and that's how you discern the truth right it's a bit like saying you know god clearly is working through all these cardinals and the bishops and all that and deciding who's going to be the next one up obviously it allows for a lot of personal politicking and right, bullshit yeah. but uh yeah. people gonna corrupt things so that's how it there's goes. a movie called the two popes have you seen it no is that the um... one is that the one whether it's about the choosing of the Pope. Yes. That's, it's Hopkins, really, it? really, really, really good. I watched it. I watched and Jonathan it, yeah. Price. It's right. Yeah, it's actually brilliant. It gives you a real insight into the kind of way the Pope is chosen and works because obviously there was a sort of th an unusual thing that happened relatively recently where the Pope Ratzenberger, or what's his name? Ratzenberger. He, he, he kind of abdicated. Yeah. Um, well, which, just... which hadn't really been done before. So he just, he just, he resigned. He just thought. Yeah, Listen. but I think he was super old and fragile, wasn't he? And he was losing his marbles. I don't know. I could, well, a, could a be little wrong. bit of that. It's, it's somewhat covered in the movie, and obviously, I don't know how fictionalized it is, but it's it, it's a sort of thing where I think that the, when you are the Pope, God is your word is God for a start, yeah, right. which is word nuts. is gospel, and also God is supposed to speak directly to you. And I think that in many what in many cases here, cardinals and who became popes found that God wasn't speaking to them. <laughs> Almost, and we're a bit surprised by it. <laughs> they think God, he was like going to well, email them and stuff. No, I'll tell you one thing. God spoke to me. He said, "Don't believe the hype." And my God looks like Flavor Flav, Flav as well, which is odd, I know, but it's just the way the way it is. You're, but, you're a Flavor Flavist. Yeah, I'm a Flavor Flavist. Yeah, through and through. Um, <laughs> oh, there's yeah, the door. I said I, it would happen. It's uh, maybe right. I should watch that. The two. Do you think I'll learn more about um the Pope? By I watched that it. movie, or I because I really it. don't know anything about the Pope uh, other than like I mean I probably recognize him in a parade or whatever, but like uh, I don't actually know like much about behind the scenes what goes into poping. You know, like I don't know how the Pope is chosen. Well, I guess you guys just explained it, but like it it seems interesting because I mean it's obviously whole the whole thing is still very. There's a there's a massive following and uh, for it and it's still it's still hugely it's popular, the, right? It's like, one of the oldest sort of traditional things, yeah, that yeah. really. That's kind of still going, yeah. Because yeah, and it's so weird and all wraps up in yeah, in sort of it's pageantry and yeah. and 
and rules. There's, you know, it's a little bit like tr- really couched in tradition talking about Christmas traditions, but but religious traditions. Really what I do. want to know is where did my tradition of lying on the sofa drinking Bailey's and being pissed by five o'clock and watching telly come? Oh from? well, I mean um, that's just uh, that's just that's just a dad thing, isn't it? That doesn't have anything to do with the holidays. It's just like, but we all do it. It's clearly it's clearly rooted in something. Yeah, but I would do that at any given day. You know, like if if everybody in my house is like occupied, like you know, playing Nintendo or watching a movie or something like that, that's what I'm doing. I'm like, okay, I'm laying down and I'll probably fall asleep, <laughs> and I may may be drinking at the time. I'm not sure. You know what I mean? What do like you it's... guys have for your Christmas uh, meal? As you're both, you know, disgusting non-meat eaters, how do you uh, get through the day without a delicious roasted dinner? Well, I was actually eyeing up a uh, Marks and Spencer's plant-based uh, turkey thing. Oh, turkey yeah. Roast. I've had those. I've had those before. They're not bad. Were you like, eyeing it up and thinking, yeah, it's not bad? Well, I was I was thinking about what to have this Christmas, yeah. I normally have some roast potatoes, um, some nice carrots, you know, maybe some sprouts, mm. uh, like a bit a bit of a bit of uh, veggie gravy and uh, you know, like some nice bread or something like that. It's usually Can I let you fine guys in on a secret? Go for it. My favorite part of a roast meal is probably the vegetables. I mean, oh, this yeah. is this is what no about secret, having dude. have you ever tried having a Yorkshire pudding with your with your roast vegetables I, I, before? I do love a Yorkshire pudding. Oh yes, man, of that's course. that's kind of nice. That just but like the, changes the problem things up is, a bit. The absolute highlight of the meal for me is Mrs. F's gravy, which is actually god tier. Like, it's, yeah. she, she makes <laughs> the best gravy. No, you can't be. I mean, gravy, gravy sure. is crucially important. Yeah, I, I went, I actually had um, there's a pie minster in. In the St. Nick's Market, and I had a, a, a Moolus Moo pie yesterday. Oh, with, pie Minster makes some really nice pies. With gravy and mash and yeah. peas. And oh. I was like, man, I, give me this for Christmas dinner. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, I'd eat that for Christmas dinner for I sure. I mean, turkey yeah. sucks. Let's just let's just pop that on the fucking menu of discussion topics. Well, it's there. inferior chicken. It, I think we've spoken bad. about this before. Oh, man. I, I honestly, <laughs> when I used to eat meat, my mom used to make like a, like a turkey dinner for Christmas and like for Easter. So I kind of like turkey. Yeah, actually like it was but it was wouldn't right. you rather have had i mean chicken is so good well like, i think they so used good. to eat chicken on christmas because it was better and it was special and it was a bit rarer they didn't used to have chicken every day like we do now but when at some point that flipped and became we eat the the, the shit at one on christmas i read a very a... interesting article actually about chickens yeah um, oh. the other day which was that the average chicken now cost three pounds holy crap and 50 years ago that would have cost 11 pounds wow is that with inflation that is accounting for inflation it's just so supply and demand though i mean god there's got to be more chickens than ever now like they're well freaking everywhere but the margins are getting so thin yeah. And the expectation for how much chicken people want is a going lot of up. The, a lot of the preparation of uh, chickens to eat is automated now too, right? More or less. Like the... Yeah, but the, the, the point is the amount of money that they're getting, right? Yeah. So you can get a Sainsbury's medium chicken for £3.50, uh-huh. which is insane. You that's, should that's not be able to actually. buy yeah. an entire chicken for that much. And I, I think about this quite often when, when I look at the margins for things. I think, how much can they be making? Like, I understand some things are loss leaders, you know, like milk and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. But you can't tell me that raising a chicken from birth to death, the entire process, shipping it, packaging it, everything, buying a chicken should be a premium item. It shouldn't be considered like a, and, uh, you know, I'll get the milk, get the paper, oh, I'll buy a chicken. But you can get a coffee <laughs> more expensive than a ch- chicken. Like, yeah, I think yeah. That's oh ridiculous. My you can get a large chips from the chip shops for like as much as it costs to buy a whole chicken from right. the store. Right. It's nuts. So that's I, crazy. I, I think that they, they should. Have like I think a lot of this is to do with supermarkets, but our expectation for the amount of meat that we have is is insane. I've spoken before right. at length about fridge raiders, and I will again. Disgusting. Do you guys ever think about this? Like you, the food that we eat on a daily basis. Okay, just take for example your your average day and the food that you consume in that day. That's like mm. pretty normal for you, right? Like it's not yeah. you're not really eating anything out of the ordinary for you at the time. Indeed. Imagine a situation kind of like you know, worst case scenario, Brexit or something like that, where supply lines, everything is really massively disrupted. We're cut off. The and island you're, is you're cut somehow off. cut off and you're kind of left to it for, you don't know how long, you know, maybe forever, you know, like, like we really take for granted, like all this we really do. nice, convenient food. Right. But like, 
like it it takes a long time to grow food as well i mean i learned this from from doing it in the summer and you can fuck it up royally too so <laughs> if you do you're suddenly in the situation where you're like holy shit i have no food like i'm i have to eat berries out of a bush or something to stay alive so you're saying like what what would we do if all food supplies like the entire food supply network for the country was shut off and there was literally no food on any shelves anywhere. Yeah. What would you eat? Yeah. Well, we've been fattening up our dog nicely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. She, she lasts for a week or so. Yeah, but like, so you would dismember your dog, but like, how would you prepare it? Like, it would just be, be kind of hard, right? To know I, what, what cuts to get from it and no, stuff. No, like, I, I don't have those skills. She's got delicious looking little thighs. I need okay. those straight away. <laughs> yeah. Her little front legs are like, like wings. They go straight away. Yeah. Little front legs are like wings. Uh, you know, she's got some. Put Jonah there. You think you'd be like crying the whole time you were eating it? No, I'm like, hungry. Oh god! Well, I'm suppose, hungry, yeah. so you got to survive. Eat yeah. yeah, and she's she's got some some meat at the front, definitely. I think she cooked up. You could you can save that you till Boxing Day. Like, yeah, because yeah, you get some Boxing I mean, Day. Don't, don't get me wrong. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about this, but I would personally be so fucking screwed like i don't know what the hell i would do what grows on jersey potatoes yeah you'd have potatoes but then again like i said you that's providing you you know how to plant them and when to harvest them and all that kind of shit which i'd say the average person does not know right. any of this stuff um so like you know oh, left to your fucking own fucking door again Christ. left to your own devices <laughs> i i think it's i think that's pretty scary stuff i'm not I'm, i doubt it would ever happen sort of thing but i you know just like entertaining the 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 scenario sort of thing i i would be be freaking hopeless no this is one of those big fears that all the supply everyone always panics about this yeah, you know, well, because i, I guess think that's cause... why people were like uh, going crazy getting the toilet paper and stuff I mean, yeah. if you didn't have toilet paper, what are you doing? Using, like, some old, like, undershirts or something? Like, your duvet? I don't know, man. Like, What are they... They always give me these stupid facts. Like, we're, we're only three days away from, you know, starvation or whatever. You know, yeah. we've only got three days' worth of food at every given time right. on, on shore. You know, because we're a net importer of food, the UK, yeah, you yeah. see. And, and so are some other places, like... Hong Kong and Singapore, big urban centers yeah, yeah, yeah. where of course. they have to bring a lot of food in from the outside just because they're because we've our economy is too I don't know industrialized or whatever. We've got too many people and not enough land. All the land we're using is golf courses instead of uh, um, places to grow know. more food for people or whatever. I think yeah. also we, we don't grow a lot of stuff that we actually could eat, like a uh, lot of rapeseed, for example, is a big crop, and a lot yeah. of stuff that oh. we export, and a lot of the stuff that we fish. We don't eat. Yeah, it's just, it, it, like we it, export it's a lot of ex fish, exported. So. Yeah, uh, I mean, we haven't been able to feed ourselves for a long time as an island. I mean, if we just ate turnips, yeah. we'd be fine. That's what we used to get by on. Post World War II, it was, uh, it was, it was during the uh, the rationing times and all that kind of stuff. It was, it was like that, right? Like lots yeah. of lots of root of, vegetables. We imported carrots, a lot of shit. Turnips. They had too many, and everybody was sick of them. That's yeah. why that entire generation knows how to grow vegetables because you fucking had to, I guess. You had like, to. You know, yeah, great. yeah. Like even even in in Jersey, like when it was occupied during World War II, people were starving because um uh, the supply lines were completely cut off, you know, when uh especially once France was uh was invaded by the by the allies and taken back. Yeah, yeah. Um the Channel Islands were still cut off. So people had to learn how to make food out of what was around and it was kind of gross, you know. They had to make Who like these Do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? <laughs> if you think our turnips are done. <laughs> But yeah, I don't. I I personally would never want to be in a situation like that because I just don't have the skills to get by <laughs> in that sense. You know, like I I just I'm too used to eating like you know cookies and stuff, and I like them. And uh, you know, what the hell would you do all of a sudden? Oh uh, yeah, you're never gonna have cookies again. Oh shit! <laughs> like I I don't know how to make those myself for, yeah. for the most part. Like it's a nightmare. Jesus. What was that bloody woman's name who my parents had the flipping cookbook of? Some, some Berry terrible Berry? old. No, uh, no, there was some old, what was her name? Ooh, oh my God, she had like nettle soup and all these wartime oh, kind of cooking yeah, stuff. Yeah, we had yeah. one in Fanny our, Craddock? Uh, no. Betty uh, not Fanny Craddock? Not Fanny Craddock, not Betty Crocker, no. Delia even, Smith. Nigella Lawson. Oh. No, old. Gordon Ramsay. Man, she, um, she, uh, they, they were eating some, they, they, they had terrible taste back then. They what? were eating suet. 
I and mean, they had to, though. And syrup. They were starving, They right? would just eat all sorts of stuff. You think that they would like, look at the food that we eat nowadays and say the same thing? Like, you know, when people are getting... it's all just renamed differently, yeah. Yeah, like, people are getting, like, burritos and McDonald's delivered to their house and stuff. Like, they probably think the same, right? They're probably like, God, that's gross. Give me some suet. You got any roast suet? <laughs> I guess you're just used <laughs> Julia to what Child? you're used to. No. No, it'll, it'll come to me, Julia Child. What was her name? It was something like Enid or something, or someone like that. Enid Blyton? Edith no. Piaf. She did a e- no, she did a great a... Piaf. Edith, <laughs> was... Edith Piaf's she Piaf. A, a great she raspberry a... Piaf. I love her Piaf. Edith Piaf's That's Piaf. She was named after. <laughs> Welcome to the kitchen. Oh, man. <laughs> Before we continue, it's holiday season. It sure is. That means there are stockings to be stuffed and elves to be cuffed. And balls Uh, to be shaved. And today's sponsor, yes, Manscaped. I guessed it. Good guess, baby. Get your your baubles all uh, greased up and manicured perfectly for some sexy time over the Christmas vacation. Matt, did you write this this copy? This is good stuff. I wrote it. I wrote the book. I wrote the playbook on Manscaped. Um... Well, Manscaped is the leader in men's <laughs> below-the-waist grooming. They have served more than 4 million men worldwide, so 8 million balls. Wow. Oh, that's a... been... Well, no, you say that. Shit. Hitler really had one, so let's not go and presume how many testicles a man well, has. Well, we're rounding up. So now's the time to pick up your Manscaped Surefire Win stocking stuffers, Christmas presents. You can get some cologne. There's a nail kit, some ball toner and refresher. Nice. Uh, these are all small enough to fit in a stocking, but big enough to change a man's life. Hell They're vegan, yeah. cruelty-free, dye-free, sulfate-free, and paraben-free. You can get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash Triforce. Whether this is for your partner, your dad, or just your friend, you can get them something they will use, and it will certainly get a laugh. Twenty uh, percent off, free shipping. Manscaped.com/slash Triforce. Be the ballsiest gift giver this year Oof. with Manscaped. Oh, bam. Tone up your baubles big time. Bam. Very nice. Tone. Kaboom. Hey, listen. Uh, changing the subject slightly, uh, I went to. I took my son to see the new Ghostbusters movie on Sunday. Uh, Alex said to me it was the worst film he's seen at the movies ever. Well, I haven't seen a movie at the at the theaters for quite some time. The last one I saw was Peter Rabbit 2, so this wasn't too bad in comparison, honestly. He said he almost walked out because it was so bad, but he stuck it out. Yeah, it I mean, my I, my nine-year-old son really liked it. We, at the end of the movie, he said, this is the best movie I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, for context, though, as I've said, uh, he's seen like three movies in his life, so, <laughs> right. you know, that's going to be that's gonna be <laughs> up the there cinema. for sure. Right. He, no, he liked it, though. He It was... It, it was uh, it was kind of like my experience going to see Terminator 2 with my dad when I was like 12. You know, that's it was, a baller movie. I oh, mean. yeah, that was awesome. But like, it's it's not so much the movie. I think he enjoyed the experience. It was a 12A. He's not 12. So, you know, he thought that that he was like hanging out with his dad and getting away with something or whatever. Right, so right, right. that side of it, I think he really enjoyed too. Uh, and the movie was like, it wasn't great. You know, like it was, you know, the original movies, it didn't do the original movies justice. It, it, in fact, just kind of ripped off a lot of stuff from the original movies, which yeah. I guess it would. But I mean, really, like it, like a lot of like the, the key plot points from the first movie are, are, you know, present in this movie, which was felt a little bit lazy and stuff. I, I watched a few reviews where they said it's almost a beat for beat yeah. remake in parts. And, oh, there's uh, it's parts like there's this part where Paul Rudd goes into a Walmart that's just been haunted to buy marshmallows. And of course, you see, you know, the marshmallow man. I don't know if you've seen the trailers, but you, there's like all it, the, yeah. the little mini marshmallow man. So he runs out of the aisle because, you know, these marshmallow men start biting him and stuff. And uh, and the big fucking dog, you know, like the Gozer dog mm-hmm. from the first movie is eating, you know, some puppy chow out of a big bag, starts chasing him and then does the thing, you know, like in the first movie when uh, when um, what's Lewis his face? Tully. Lewis Tully is in Central Park and and hey, the, the fucking the dog bursts out of the yeah. glass doors <laughs> yeah. It does all that. It's like it's it's like scene for scene exactly the Lewis Tully thing, but it's Paul Rudd, you know, Bizarre. jumping into his car in the end or whatever. Bizarre. And uh, you know, it's got like Gozer, the gatekeeper, the key master, all the old stuff. And it's just like it feels it, a lot of it feels a bit half baked. Like the the start of the movie is really slow, and there's post credit stuff hinting at sequels and stuff too. So it's like, oh man, I don't know. They, they, it's it's all kids 
that are like the you know the ghostbusters but it's like egon spangler's granddaughter right. who is the brain box who just knows how all of the fucking gear works and you know, the, the last 10 minutes of the movie just goes from like zero to a hundred Im- immediately and then they just know how to defeat gozer and they just trap gozer <laughs> in a trap which is kind of like at okay. ghostbusters dude if you look at ghostbusters it was original and star wars and Indiana it Jones was really and stuff, original but they, but they might have borrowed stuff from other other films that went before but they didn't sure. feel like they were literally remaking them and the fact that we're still watching those movies and remakes and franchises based around those movies what happens in 20 or 30 years time when you've got the next generation of young people who want to see movies and they're like star wars again like yeah. my parents watched it now i'm watching it this this is becoming like a cult for some reason where we just we must remake the star wars yeah. and the ghostbusters endlessly when is a generation of film going to come along where it's literally we have a 10 year period and there's like a whole bunch of new genuinely interesting original settings and ideas and things when is that going to happen yeah. when is it going to happen i feel like um I, I i feel like like watching i've been watching that documentary series again because there's been a new couple of seasons since i last watched it but the movies that made us and there's yeah. <clears throat> there was like uh you know forrest gump back to the future jurassic park all, all these like you know big movies from when i was a kid i remember them being coming out being being very big very popular big box office hits and stuff and um, I feel like now there's more Ho- Hollywood rather than I don't even think they wanted to take many risks back then because a lot of these big movies almost didn't make it. You know, like if you look at the documentary, it's like they had budget oh, God, issues. Yeah. Nobody wanted to to fork out the money to make these movies. Nobody believed in them. A lot of people didn't like the scripts, whatever. You know what I mean? And there was a lot of improvisations that had to be made along the way in order yeah. to get these movies out. Like like Forrest Gump, for example um tom hanks and um and and the the director uh, had to had to fork out money just to to make it happen because the studio was like no you're done like we're not putting any more money into this movie they were like cut out the vietnam scene cut out this scene cut out and they're like we don't have a movie without these scenes like you (laughs) have to have them and they were like no no like you're you're spending too much money you don't want it and now it feels like it, it feels like it's still like that they don't want to take risks but they have this whole catalog of surefire uh ips right yeah yeah that they can now just borrow from so like whenever they they just need to make some money it's like okay let's just reboot this fucking box office smash from the 90s and you know hopefully people are just going to be dumb enough to go see it and we'll make more money or whatever someone someone on my discord posted a thing about movies i'm sure i don't know if it's true or whatever but it was an interesting looking graph was that films made like based on original ips rather than just either remakes or like an addition to or a sequel or part of a franchise or whatever and how that's gone downhill uh and i i just think you know people worry that cinema is dead and all the rest of it if you look at stuff like netflix and amazon and all the rest of it and apple yeah there's a lot more originality there and a lot more risk taking yeah and I, I think as much as cinema complains that streaming services or what's i think a lack of invent in of risk taking is actually what's killing them i feel um, the same yeah i a feel lot like more. I don't think cinema is dead. I mean, I no. think there's plenty of good movies coming out. It's but not what I, it was. I think, we're, I think we're talking about really big blockbuster movies here, which seem to have they 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 they're they're almost scared to make them, right? Because maybe the budgets are just much bigger now, or or something. It costs but like, so much to make a movie. I mean, that is like yeah, I, you but, know what? I, you know, I was what we talked last week about Lethal Weapon. So I also watched Lethal Weapon two and three because I like I'm not a completionist in some regards, and I was like, well, you know what happened. Yeah, so I finished watching them all and I was like, I haven't watched four yet. In fact, I'm not even sure I've ever seen four. But um, I was struck by just how cheap and shitty it looked for a yeah. major movie. Right. Um, there, were, there was an awful lot of just pretty bad, crappy looking sets and lighting, yeah. some really bad shots. Uh, some really, really lousy camera work, and all the action in it was really, really dull. And there's the cocking doorbell again. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's too poppy. Three. He's, that's three. He's got the in, hatchet, in, yeah. in twenty minutes. Oh my god, it's too popular, man. I, like I can go for weeks without my doorbell going. I, like I, don't I know. know how he I does don't it. think I. I don't think my doorbell's ever rung. Yeah, crazy. I. I, I don't have. I don't like people knowing where I live. No, you know, I just like being a secret 
secretive mole. You got to know my, the password, the secret password, the handshake and stuff. Like, there's no way. Yeah, and the door house, like yeah. slides aside, and there's like an ugly face behind. It's like, oh yeah, password. Yeah, that's the one. Um, yeah. I haven't seen Lethal Weapon in a long enough time to uh to 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 to, to say. But the thing is, that's you're right though. Like budgets are nuts. Like even for TV shows. Like I watched um the Wheel of Time TV show this week. Any and good? I heard that's pretty Lord good Rings actually. TV shows coming out. It's on Amazon Prime. It's um. We did a little. We're doing a little sh um, show about it, actually, like a sponsored show. Ah. so I can't say it's bad. Okay, no, um, sure. I'm a big fan of the Wheel of Time, and uh, I thought it was actually okay. Um, I, 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 I'm always. It's always hard to watch something that you know well. Right, because yeah. it's like, oh, they uh, how are they going to cover this? You're constantly like aware of what's happening in the next scene, yeah, almost. Because a lot of the time, people are scared to adapt too much from the book, but they have to, right? Because they haven't got time, and sometimes the book stuff doesn't work. And you know, you don't want to, you know, books have got so much crap in them that you know, even if you did, I mean, the the, the I think the series is six or eight episodes. It does the first book of the Wheel of Time? There's fourteen books. Jeez. Like, so there are actually fifteen books because there's the also prequel. New Spring, which came out. That was number zero. Came out in two thousand. I've read that. I've read that as well. That's yeah. uh, too many wheels and too much time for me. Sips, honestly. you're not going to believe how long these books are. I've read some. I of would. Them. I've read so like the one, first two, two three, or three, and I could not. Carry Four, on. five, six. Seven, well, they're all. I, the, the, there's one of them that's 675 pages long, Aye. and there's one that's 672. Those are the short ones. The, there's there are some that are knocking on a thousand pages. Lord of Chaos is nearly a thousand pages long. It's a 41 hour audiobook. Holy that is holy bonkers. Crap. bonkers. Hey, um, that is bonkers. That's so long. Can I just give you that? This was why I, I remember a couple of people have tried to get me to read Wheel of Time, Lewis. You were one of them. Uh, my friend Bruno was another one of them, and there was a couple of other friends of mine. This is what puts me off. This is the premise on Wikipedia. At the dawn of time, a deity known as the Creator forged the universe and the wheel of time, which spins the pattern of the ages, using the lives of men and women as its threads. The wheel has seven spokes, each representing an age, and is rotated by the one power, which flows from the true source. It's all very much like that. Yes. Lots of capital yes. letters and lots of true source, one power, ancient oh, one. And there's a it's lot a there's much. a lot of elf names in it as well. Yeah. <laughs> All of it is slightly woolly, right? All of that is woolly. Like the, the wheel of time is woolly, the pattern is woolly, like everything is blurry and mysterious and not really properly well, I mean, you've got fourteen books to to get get a bit of a grasp on it. But even with that, it's still it does feel I I know what you mean. The thing about Wheel of Time is it's Generic fantasy. I want to say that high fantasy. It's 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 uh, these days it would be a young adult series, right? Because everyone's seventeen. They don't really get into. They want none of them die for fourteen books, kind of thing. It's 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 not grim, dark, gritty, modern yeah. fantasy, yeah, right? No. Where we want you know game of the thing is this new series tries to Game of Thronesify we have time a bit. Right. They add characters to them. Is there kill lots them. of like uh, exciting humping in it and stuff as well to like spruce it up or not really? Uh, well all the all the characters instead of being seventeen are all mid twenties, so I'm assuming there will be there's, there was a bath scene I a saw. Bit of um, yeah, so there are bits of that. I think <laughs> so there have to be, bits. right? Because if you're basically making a show which is like, if you liked Game of Thrones, you'll love Wheel of Time. It's got to have a bit of Games of Thrones tits and death. Game of Wheel. <laughs> wheel game of, of the Wheel of the Throne of Time. The mobile coming game. soon. Yeah. To a streaming show. Yeah. If you look at the most popular fantasy, you know, best selling things, there obviously it's Harry Potter at number one, which which is obviously a huge franchise. Then it's Lord of the Rings, and Amazon are already doing a new Lord of the Rings. Wait, show Harry right Potter now. is bigger than Star Wars? Huge for fantasy. Fa fantasy, I think, in fact, terms of fantasy, not necessarily sci-fi. I think Star Wars fits into that probably. I, or, I don't know. You know, let's have a look. Um, I mean, I know Harry Potter is big, but I just didn't think in it terms was of a fantasy than... universe. Highest-grossing movie franchises of all time. It goes the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which has made eighteen. Oh yeah, that that. Billion billion. I mean, this yeah. is different. This is this is. Well, we talked about this before, but yeah, I mean. It, in terms of fantasy tropes and fantasy universes, Wheel of Time's huge, and it hasn't really had anything successful done with no. it, right? Yeah, Jay, and there's apart a reason from the for books, that. it exists only in the books, right? There's no movies, there's no television. Pro well, there is now, but like 
There wasn't anything. There have been bo- there have been things done around it that have done very poorly. Right. You know, it's it's this is obviously I think I think I get the feeling it's done by the Amazon Prime second team and the first team are working on Lord of the Rings. Do you know what I mean? But that doesn't make mean it's bad. I think it's fine. Um, but I think I think I would like it more if I hadn't didn't know the source material. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I don't I wouldn't necessarily recommend people read The Wheel of Time unless they are willing unless they like light fantasy. I, I'd say light in terms of I mean the, the TV show definitely isn't that. There's burning witches and torture and all sorts of right, stuff. Right. But you know, it's it's the books are are lighter, they're more gentle right. in a sense. They're not as not as they're not in a, a modern horribleness. There's no child's getting burned at the stake child's or whatever, you know, burned. like in child's. child's. You know, I, I'm just trying to find examples <laughs> of horrible things that happen in Game of Thrones, but Game of Thrones is full of horrors, isn't it? It's, oh, it's yeah. terrifying. The books are even worse, right? Like there's full, yeah, full, oh, of, yeah. full of nasty stuff in the books. It's absolutely awful, yeah, really, comparatively, you know. And so, you know, this is not that, but I think, I think, it, I don't want to say it's hard to go back, but it's, it's, it's different. It's a different universe and it's, you have to invest, but, Obviously, huge fan of Brandon Sanderson, who was brought in to complete the last... Well, I think he was originally going to do the last book, but then he ended up turning into three books because there were a lot of untied threads. And I think, actually, a lot of work was done putting the threads together and making it a satisfying conclusion. Right, what about the spokes? The Wheel of Time. Yeah, the Wheel of Time. The pattern was threaded. The spokes were greased. sewn up. The gears were changed. Do they worship bicycles in any way? Is there a lot of bicycles? (laughs) So anyway, big, big fan of the brand Uh, Imagine it's just a big penny farthing. (laughs) The guy guy is pedaling it. Hello! Oh, man. Big big fan. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I'll probably get around to watching. I've been really bad with TV shows and movies recently. Like, uh, well, foundation. Like I said, good. I haven't been. I mean, I haven't even seen Dune or anything. I heard I that's seen pretty Dune good. Yet either I really uh, want. Dune is great. Yeah, yeah. Great, so, great movie. Fa- foundation is really good. Succession is really good. I yeah, I heard Succession is pretty nice. I might start watching that with my wife. That, you've actually. got three series to watch of that, so you should do it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah. I, I just started watching um, a show where it's got Paul Rudd and Will Ferrell in. And I wasn't expecting to enjoy it, but I, I've watched the first episode. I can't remember what it's called. It, it's basically about a psychiatrist. It, it was quite good. It was quite quite enjoyable. Um, did you and, Did you watch Ted Lasso in the end? Yeah, I don't. I I fell out of out of love with Ted Lasso. Oh, right. But you've been um, posting pictures of you going around the Ted Lasso that was series where they one. Filmed that it. was series one. Oh, you didn't like series oh, two. Right. Series one was really good. Series two. Uh, this uh, this is not an attempt at critique because I like shows like Ted Lasso. I like the fact that it's an original character and the yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Was engaging and all the rest of it. Series one was more about the differences between an American coach coming to the UK, dealing with coming to the UK and all the rest of it. And it was it was it wasn't like very often laugh out loud funny. No. But the character of Ted Lasso was very likable. Yeah. The other characters were good, but it was still basically a show about him. Uh. Series two is far more about the other characters, an awful lot of time is spent on the other characters. And I'll be honest with you, characters, some of the characters are just not that interesting. No. Coach Beard is not that interesting a character. And there's a whole episode dedicated yeah, to Yeah, I agree with that. That The, that the Coach Beard was episode so, was, a, was a big flop so for bad. me as well. A lot of people liked it, but I, I oh, didn't Oh, it was like abysmal. It. Yeah, it really it was. It was abysmal. It yeah. was just so bad that I, I mean it was actually crazy. I like his I like his character, but he's just not a he's just not a huge character to me. You know what I mean? No, like his he's whole a, point he's, is he doesn't work without Ted. Like, yeah, he's just a big support character, kind of like kind of wise, you know, behind the scenes sort of thing, and that and that's fine, you know, like yeah, um, like I liked him as a quiet well wise head i don't want to see this other side because it because it just wasn't engaging or funny or even remotely believable no yeah like it, it was, was just, it was just ludicrous it was just and weird, then yeah. nate becoming a bad guy at the end of season two i was like <laughs> where the fuck did this come from like i've watched every episode of this show that was kind of coming though like again coming back to beard beard sort of predicted it right was always giving him well, weird looks and and sort of yeah because he was acting up yeah. but here's the thing the actor who plays nate uh nick Nick Muhammad, uh, he posted this big explanation of why Nate became a bad guy and the minutia that he has to go into to, to l- let you discern that actually this character was not a great guy. And even he's speculating 
about some of the things that happened to his character in his post. The, the actor should not have to explain <laughs> why the character did something. Yeah. That's the job of the writers, and that is the job of the show. It shouldn't be an after the fact, okay, let me explain it to you. Because then you've lost the audience. Like, I, I'm not believing it at that point. Yeah. And I just thought it was reaching. I thought they realized that they didn't actually have anything dramatic happen in season two. There was no dramatic moment. It was all just very stately stuff. And if, if something, if someone falls out with someone, they make up pretty much that episode. Everything is resolved very quickly. There's no tension in the show. And it's just sort of like, okay, what what are we waiting for here? Like, there's, there's nothing keeping yeah. the show or the characters going. There's no tension at all. So they just dump this in in the final episode, as in, like, season three is going to be a core cross. Like, I don't think so. Like, I, I'm done with the show, in all honesty. Season two was such a letdown. That episode in particular, the Coach Beard episode, killed it for me. Like, I thought, oh, man, this is fucking awful. Yeah, I, you know, I, I also didn't like the Coach Beard episode. I mean, I'll watch season three, see how it goes sort of thing. I, I, I agree with you on 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 a, on a bit of it. Not all of it, but, um, okay. but you know, it's... Um, that's how I feel. Yeah, no, that's fa it's, it's fair enough. I apologize, Lasso fans, and believe me, I, I was one of you. I watched... Um... I watched Hellbound this week. Hellbound? <laughs> have you heard of no, Hellbound? No, I haven't heard of it. No, sir. It's, a few people have talked about it as it's like, um, it's the most popular Netflix series. It's like the new Squid Game, right? It's like, um, it's like a sort of a Netflix... Um... So massively underwhelming and overhyped? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think that that's kind of what's happened like a little bit like um, with TV, though, in, in a sense, right? Like back in the day, we only had a couple of channels, so everyone watched the same shit, yeah. right? And then it kind of spread out, a, started spreading out a lot. Everyone got Sky, they got all those different channels, everyone started watching different stuff. But then Netflix came along and kind of, and has slowly sort of homogenized. And recently, you know, with Tiger King and a few other big things, we've seen the audiences kind of become, I don't know, like like focused again, and the 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 the, the trends focused onto everyone talking about this. I like this that. one thing. That's a that's like a cultural touchstone for people. Is that you know you can you can refer to things. I I, I wouldn't like it if we were all watching different things and nobody had any conversation that they could have about it. Have you seen so and so? No. What channel is that on? Oh, it's on streaming platform number one hundred and eighty seven. No, I missed it. Yeah, I've got I've got a thousand other shows to catch up on. Like. I like the fact that there are some shows that everyone can talk about and have an opinion yeah. about. It's good. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. So Hellbound basically is this show where, like, randomly an, uh, a terrifying face appears in front of people. They call it an angel. And it says, you're going to die in three days at Jesus. nine o'clock. And they're like, fuck. Right. And then in three days at nine o'clock, a three giant hell beings rise up out of the fucking ground or come out of the walls or come out of the sky. They fucking just appear in midair. They beat the guy to death or stab him or oh. torture him or rip him apart in some way and then burn him oh or God. her in full view of everyone, right? And they capture this on on their phones um, and share it around. And it's basically a show about how this is happening loads to loads of people and no one knows what's causing it, but they assume it's God. Uh, so they start, so this this big organization comes across where they're like, because because they, because they say you're going to get, get to, taken to hell in three days, and these guys are pretty hellish. They assume that they need to stop. They need to repent their sins. The church. They, there's this sort of new church that forms, and it's very much the church of preaching. the giant scary monsters. I've... It's called the New Truth. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like this idea that, that this church becomes a very very powerful organization that can then influence things. Um, and it's so it's about so it's, it's six episodes long, but it's very kind is of. Is it like a mini series, or is there going to be more? There's probably going to be a season two, but 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 like. I think I liked it because it was pretty unpredictable. Um, you know, there was some crazy, because some crazy shit happened. It wasn't the best TV. Uh, I'm sure it'll be a bit overrated, um, but it's like, man, it's 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 wild. Do you know what? It, it keeps. It's good. I, I liked I it. I think so. you found the solution to the lack of creativity in the West. Is we're going to have to look east, and if yeah. Korea and places like like, you know, Japan and, and maybe even China start coming up with their own original IPs and then we're like, wow, this is great. That's where the creativity might come from. Yeah. Because we've fucking given up. I hope this is going to inspire oh, people my God. to start we making new shit. Uh, like I watched, I started watching this Netflix uh, sci-fi called Another Life with, um, and oh, it's the worst thing you've ever seen. It's so bad. Uh, oh I mean, God. I saw so, the new Ghostbusters. So the, the whole premise, I, I, you know, the whole premise is that th th there's this 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 like crystalline structure, this alien structure gets built on Earth, right? And they find out it's from a planet like miles away, 
And so they send a cr- their, their one spaceship, their crew of like their crew, but their crew is all like 21 year old horny American assholes. <laughs> right? It sounds like the one. They're the best of the best. <laughs> oh my They're God. The Did they start best. talking like orcs as well when they got there? Like, like, uh, you know, like this <laughs> or anything like that? Or like, cause that's what happened in the 100 as well. Uh, frustrating. <laughs> It's so annoying to, to, it's like, I, but it's also, it seems to be written by someone who's never <laughs> Left watched or had any kind of basic <laughs> science education. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like the first episode, they, they, some, they find an alien planet floating in space and they land on it. And then there's, they take the, the herbs there, and they smoke them and they're like weed. And then they take their helmets off and they get an alien virus. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's like, it's garbage. It's like so awful. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm going to watch that. What's it called again? It's called Another Life. Another it's, Life. It's got Man. um old Starbuck from Battlestar Galactica. She's oh, the sort of shit, protagonist. I'm sold. I haven't seen but, it actually. But no, it's I did, I cannot recommend you watch it unless you are, are bracing yourself for one of the worst sci-fi experiences you've ever mm. been sad to experience. Oh, uh, it's, man, it's, I, it's, I mean, I it's watched crap. the 100. I, it's pretty it's it, pretty bad. It's, it's like it's like a Hollywood execs son you know w- w- wanted to have a pet project <laughs> and he was like oh my son's so talented he can he can direct and write this of himself of course he can was it like Cri- it- christopher's fucking uh horror movie that he made in the, <laughs> the sopranos, sopranos. <laughs> was it called hook or something like that <laughs> oh, you don't man. understand paul he's got a hook for a hand i don't know tom <laughs> it's just sounding pretty crazy to me <laughs> let the kid make his show christopher you go ahead you got my blessing thanks yeah Thanks, boss. Oh man. Oh, I, I will, I will check that out, or maybe avoid it. I'm not sure. I, I got other stuff to watch though. Lewis, did you do, did you do the news this week? Do you have news have stories got, for us, like you did? Last I have, week? I have got some. Oh, I want to, I want to hear those. That's my favorite part of the podcast. Uh, Qu- Quentin Tarantino, yes, has been sued over plans to release a Pulp Fiction NFT. Oh. Okay. Wait, he's so, releasing a Pulp Fiction NFT? Yep. Yeah, so so Quentin Tarantino is releasing a Pulp Fiction NFT, um, and Miramax sued him, and he replied by saying, I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, apparently. Oh, yeah, so man, he's I got... just lost any respect I had for Quentin Tarantino. God, That's you're really shame. fickle with your respect, Flax. Like, it doesn't take much, eh? Just, like, all it the shouldn't, respect. It shouldn't take much. It shouldn't take much. But you lost all the respect you had for I him? I said like I lost he... a lot of respect. Oh, right, for okay. I thought you I said think. all. I was going to say, I said like, all, holy I crap. Retract I'm sure he's, God, he's had to have banked a little bit over the years. Like, he's had to. I am a big Tarantino fan. I've seen all of his movies he's had some so, belters even yeah. the stinkers and uh you know this is just a what would you say tarantino's biggest stinker is oh man i really didn't enjoy um the pla- death planet one whatever the one that was like a schlock movie i thought that was really poor oh i didn't even see that what was the did he do ghost rider is that his i don't think, so. I don't think was so. It? so no he did po- he did reservoir dogs so reservoir dogs Pulp was Fiction, was Jackie life-changing Brown. when i saw that true romance he did some true romance. some biker movie he did he did some biker movie that was bad so four rooms wasn't what very good thinking? from dust till dawn was okay but yeah he didn't that was all right that. jackie brown was very good kill bill was very good oh, kill Sin bill, City, yeah. he did a little bit of that it was all right. Grindhouse Death Proof was not Death very good. Death Proof. That's the one and I was thinking. And Grindhouse of. Planet Terror was not very good. Like, I just thought they were fucking gross. Inglorious Bastards was okay. I think it was a massive missed opportunity in some ways and some really weird decisions, but it was all right. Django Unchained was decent. Hateful Eight was decent. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was was really good and then ruined by what, good. in my that opinion, was, was a terrible good. ending. Um, but uh, it was. Uh, he's just got into a weird revenge only thing, which is kind of. Getting on my tits, you know, let, let's fucking move on a bit, shall yeah. we? Yeah. Anyway, um, Uber Eats, here's the next bit of news. Uber Eats is going to deliver uh, weed to customers in Canada. Nice. There you go. You can order Groovy. your weed to your door. Holy crap. Uh, this, is the, this is the fucking life, isn't this it? This is the this future. This is where we're going. Right, we're like, come on, we're so far behind in, over here. Like, come on. Weed to your f- back front in the door? day, you had to pay thirteen pound for chicken and get it yourself. <laughs> yeah, now God. you can order weed. You get a three pound chicken and some weed to your house. Perfect. Is that what your doorbell's been? Fucking yeah, it's just <laughs> weed, All the weed non-stop chicken and weed. This guy is uh, living his no, best life. No, no, that was not what I was doing. These were parcels. I am not doing anything illegal. I do not smoke nor possess weed. Thank you. 
Just a little disclaimer well, that, there. That completely convinced me. NASA are going to slam uh, a spaceship into an asteroid. I saw that. Yeah, it's like right Armageddon. About this. Yeah, yeah. They it launched is. a. Uh, it's like a little box that they're going to slam right into an asteroid. It's called the Double Asteroid Redirection Test. Yes. Start. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a trial run for dealing with Earth threatening asteroids without Bruce Willis having to risk it all. <laughs> so I know, I know I know all about this because I read like four articles about it yesterday. Yeah, it's yeah. not the box that's slamming into it. The box is going to detach and oh. film the rest of the spaceship oh. slamming into it because they want to see what happens and because it looks cool and you want to show pictures of that Holy back home. Crap. They think it will adjust the orbit. So it's a it's a, a big rock that's orbited by a smaller rock and they're going to hit the smaller rock and they're going to see if they can change its orbit around the big rock by just 1%. That's what they think, just 1%. Well, that's all it takes, right? Then it's going to have it it a new trajectory and then it's just it'll be a narrow miss. Uh, we'll get a little bit of comet dust, uh, maybe you know, like uh, maybe like a skid mark on the on the planet that's what or we whatever. Need. But that yeah. it's better than an impact crater and a massive yeah, it's good tidal to wave, know. right? Yep. Done, I'm sure they've done the maths. The I'm math sure they have. Oh, they've done the math for sure. They interviewed a guy who looks like all he does is the math. Like the he, math. He's just yes. the math, the math guy at NASA. Like, they just need to stick rockets on another rock and shoot it at another rock. Because that would really move it. Like, if, I think that's the plan eventually, surely has to be. We send a ship out there that lands and burrows in, like, drills into the asteroid, and it's got rocket boosters, and it sort of aligns itself with where it needs to be and fires itself. It doesn't even need to be going very quickly. It just needs to be traveling on a trajectory where it's going to collide yeah. with an incoming rock. Because, we, you know, we can't just shoot stuff at it. We'll run out of stuff. There's stuff floating around out there in space is doing nothing for nobody. Shoot it at one of these rocks. And knock it off course. Bam. Job done. Bam. Well, I mean, that's that's the hope, isn't it? Uh, and then final piece of news. In Brazil, a cow um, is, is tended for the slaughterhouse, I assume, at some of these big ranches that they have, escaped and um, managed to get its get stuck on a water slide at a neighbouring uh, holiday resort. He just wanted to have fun <laughs> one last her. time. Good for her. I mean, <laughs> so come on. A, it's, it's become a bit of a celebrity. It's now got a name and of a course. state of execution and all the uh, rest of it. But um, yeah, it's. I mean, I I love that it just went on the water slide. <laughs> yeah. That is that is pretty nuts. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I, th- I guess she just thought, you know what? I'm I'm about to get it. Here. I'm gonna go out. I'm going I'm out. Gonna go out. I want to do. I want to. I want to complete something on my bucket list before I go. <laughs> water slide. It is. I mean, there's a water I'm park right for- here. <laughs> Did she have goggles on and a little a little swim? <laughs> yeah, a little snorkel like she looks like ogre <laughs> ogre Ma- maji with his with his fucking inflatable thing she's ready oh, she's so, ready um, someone in the comments wrote so now we know that it doesn't matter if cows are slaughtered or if they escape either way they have a good chance of becoming sliders oh Terrible. very that is good a, that is very a... very good well done you've ruined this God, well, such a wholesome story now i'm angry okay well oh i did get I... some uh I did get some messages this week as well. Right. If you want to okay. hear, my well, emails again. Just hear them. Direct emails. Uh, I actually, this this one was an Instagram message. Right. Uh, from Olivia. Uh, she said, "Hello, Perian. Huge fan of the Triforce. Thank you. I noticed in one of your latest podcasts you were talking about stem cells. That was a couple of weeks ago. I think we were talking about stem cells. She is doing her PhD in stem cell engineering. Right. And thought we might be interested in knowing that using embryonic stem cells is actually on a only a small area of stem cell research. And they use adult. Forgive me the pronunciation." mesenchymal stem cells, which are found throughout your body, throughout your life, mainly in your bone and fat tissue. They're easily harvested and commonly used. And her research is looking at whether you can use vibrational stimulation, which they call nano kicking, to stimulate stem cells into producing bone cells. And that way, someone's getting older or they're an astronaut or something like that. And they're, you know, there's going to be a lot loss of bone density. You nano kick their stem cells and it, you know, gives them uh, better bones. Holy and crap. And there's a ton of ton of applications and it's nowhere near as as uh, controversial as, as people think. There's still a lot of it going on. God damn, Olivia, how oh, many stem cell wikis do you have open at, at any given time on your second <laughs> monitor? That's insane. Uh, get, best of luck with all that. Uh, I'm glad you're doing it. It's not me because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So uh, there you go. Amazing. There are people out there studying this shit. Yeah. And here we are proclaiming that it's controversial when it's not only a little tiny bit of it is but um, yeah. you know what do we know this is why you shouldn't come here looking for truth 
just opinion and a bit of a chuckle. <laughs> Mrs. Beaton's cookbook. There That's you who Mrs. It is. Beaton. There Mrs. you go. I remember Man, it. That was the well name done. of my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Beaton. That's crazy. Oh god. Um, I just want to do. I know we don't do, do shout outs normally, but I told a guy I would do a shout out to him. So James from the IQ store, a big shout out to you. Thanks for uh, <laughs> saying hi. Wanna, we were late night shopping, and I didn't really want to look at what everyone else is looking at, so I wandered into the IQ store to pretend to look at phones. It's like an Apple. Uh, reseller a local apple reseller james came up to me told me he has small penis and said he likes the podcast and i said all right and then he said can i have a shout out please and i said okay and i almost forgot but because we're doing all this like guff at the end i just thought it was a good time so there you go good. james uh, i remembered somehow wow. uh, it's a miracle that's great yeah uh, well that's very nice of you sips all right thanks everyone we'll see you next week <laughs> So be sure to tune in and support the Jingle Jam. Jingle Jam! Because um, that's happening this oh, week. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Get on board. Don't forget. There'll be a Triforce Live on Jingle Jam. Yeah, well. and we've got some cool stuff planned. All right. Bye. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.